but it's all now Hello and welcome everyone to Variety Stick and we back again for another interesting phone from Samsung through Metro by T-Mobile So we're gonna be doing unboxing and first impression on the Samsung Galaxy A10e So without any further ado, let's find out Hold me back Cause I won't be there now just before I start the video, unbox the phone, show you the specifications, you guys need to know that Samsung tried to target people, they are on the budget. So the price of the phone is not high. The retail price of the phone is $120 and Metro offer $100 off if you just start service with Metro by T-Mobile. And if you are willing to bring your number from a carrier like Boost, Verizon, Sprint, non T-Mobile brands, you will get this phone for free. So I want to base my review and the impression based on the price of the phone. Now since we know that this phone is not expensive, so we have display 5.8, it's TFT with 720p resolution, so we don't have the best resolution and we don't have the biggest size screen, which is totally fine with me back to the price of the phone. Now the phone has edge to edge display, of course, has that 19 by 9 ratio, has only main camera on the back, 8 megapixel with LED flash and we have 5 megapixel selfie flash as well. We'll find out how it's going to be if an actual flash or just uh, lights come from the screen. I'll confirm that one for you later on. For the processor, Samsung uses Exynos 7884 with 1.6 octa-core processor and 32 gigabyte for the internal memory, which is decent in my opinion. The RAM, it's only two gigabyte of RAM, so we don't have a lot of much RAMs on the phone, but for the storage, you can expand the memory by adding SD card 512 gigabytes which is nice in my opinion and we have a battery that it's sealed in the back of the phone and it's only 3000 milliamp we'll see how the performance is gonna be going Now I did not mention to you that the phone has the C type but doesn't have fast charging, is not shipped with a fast charging adapter and the phone doesn't support fast charging anyways. As well as the phone doesn't have fingerprint on the back of the phone or even on the front and the phone has only facial recognition. It's up to you but the facial recognition for me is not the secure way to unlock the device. Now for the design build construction of the phone, the phone from the front looks stunning. Beautiful device, edge to edge infinity display from Samsung looks so nice, doesn't even look it's a budget device or whatsoever. The full frame made out of plastic of course and in the back we have shiny glossy plastic over there. I believe this will be very easy to get scratch. We have the camera with the flash, we have the buttons on the right so the volume and the power key. The power key is not distinguished with any type of textures so that make it a little difficult to figure out which the power uh, key is. Now from the bottom we have the C-Type and headphone jack. A lot of flagship these days doesn't come with a headphone jack. So you have headphone jack in this phone 3.5 and we have a bottom speaker firing from the bottom as you guys can see. On the other side we don't have no buttons because Bixby buttons is not available on this device. We have only the place where you can put the SIM tray. And I like that the camera is very flat in the back of the phone. The phone in general looks amazing. But the back it's a, a, a glassy plastic. 
I think this will be easy to get scratch, so make sure you get your case. Plus, all the fingerprints are gonna be easily shown on the back of the phone. Other than that, I understand this phone is affordable device, so I'm not expecting to get a uh, metal frame, glass on the back, wireless charging, all that good stuff. Now from the front we have little notch over here so we don't have big notch and that makes the phone look so beautiful plus we have very tiny buzzel over here. I mean honestly this phone looks even similar to the flagship Samsung phone so Samsung make cheap phones, less features, less specifications with a nice looking phone and this phone one of them. Now recently most of the Samsung phones they put the speaker down to the bottom as you guys can see over here and I don't have much problems with this uh, position for the speaker it's not my favorite of course my favorite to be on the front but it's better than being on the back but the sounds is within the normal let's say that it's not the best and it's not the most clear sound I'll let you hear so that way you can judge by yourself. Now for the screen we have 5.8 inches edge to edge infinity display 19 by 9 ratio and it has 720 for the resolution 268 for the PPI. The amount of PPI and the resolution is low I agree with this but this is not my problem. My problem is the TFT displays they're not that vivid and not contrast. Overall decent display for the price of the phone that's all I can say. Now for the hardware and the actual performance of the phone. I have tested uh, Need for Speed just for right now and later on I will be testing more games of course just to see the actual performance and how it's going to be. Now the processor 1.6 clock speed, Exynos 7884, 2GB of RAM and 32GB for the internal storage. You have the option to add SD card up to 512GB. Now someone may agree with me and someone else may not gonna agree with me but guys at the end of the day you have to look how much you pay for the phone how much you spend of the phone this phone right now if you just walk to metro and tell them hey I want to sign for a new number they will give you this phone for $20 guys and if you bring your number the phone is absolutely free at least for the meantime so you're talking about phone worth $120 what are you guys gonna expect I mean of course it's not gonna have 64 gigabyte of room or 4 gigabyte of RAM so if you need something that has more hardware specifications absolutely this is not your choice if you want a phone that has powerful a processor and you want to play games and you want to do too much on the phone this is not your option at the end of the day you get what you pay for playing need for speed honestly I haven't noticed problems or any uh, issues with lagness or with the GPU everything was playing uh, nice and smooth in my opinion yes now someone's gonna tell me yeah but because you don't put the high uh, graphics or high resolution yes the phone will optimize the game to the best experience for you so you don't need to go over the specifications and make for your phone lags for me the way the game look the graphics and the frame rate is great in my opinion and for the price I pay for this phone I don't need more than that now for the operating system Samsung uses Android 9 Android Pie which is the latest right now in the market and the phone has the custom UI one UI from Samsung instead of the touch was before so now we have one UI actually I like this custom theme over here all the icon is big as you guys can see and it's very smooth and I don't have any problems or whatsoever maybe in the future when you download a lot of applications maybe you're gonna start uh, notice some lagness or problems like that just keep your phone light because this phone is not made for people they want to use the phone in a heavy way now if buying the Samsung Galaxy A10e you're not gonna expect that you're gonna get the latest operating system when they're out maybe you're gonna receive a couple of security batches and that's it that because Samsung doesn't really push updates for a budget or cheap devices they have plenty of phones they only care about specific models the flagship and the mid-range devices now this phone a lack of the NFC the phone doesn't have certified for waterproof 
or splash proof either so you you guys gotta be careful about uh, having the phone in in the water because this will damage your phone immediately the phone has a few features which is common in all the smartphones like we have a blue filter we have airplane mode flashlight power saving mode it has a smart view which is feature only I have seen in Samsung devices where you can connect your uh, phone to your TV where you can watch videos or play some games and this is for me is very important now if the NFC is important for you this not gonna be your choice now so I have noticed also that the phone doesn't have the Samsung health application so if you would want to do sport activities and you feel this application is important for you you might need to go to the Samsung Galaxy A1 Lastly, I'm going to give you my impression about the camera on the phone. The phone has 8 megapixel camera. We have only one camera and flash on the rear. And we have 5 megapixel on the front as you guys can see. Now, speaking about the camera, especially the main camera on the phone is not that good, especially when you have low light situation. Plus, it lacks a lot of features. I have noticed there is many differences between the Samsung Galaxy A10e and the Galaxy A20. For instance, we don't have actually a live focus, which is portrait. We don't have slow motion. Uh, we don't have actually uh, a skin tune for filtering your face or anything like that, even on the front facing camera. The maximum resolution for the rear camera is full high definition, which is normal in my opinion, so we don't have 4K and we don't have wide angle for the front facing camera. It's very basic application, doesn't have a lot of features, just the features as you guys know like Panorama, a Pro, a Professional actually you can adjust the brightness and things like that. Uh, we have angle, uh, wide angle mode for the rear camera, but doesn't show me much that because the phone relay only in one camera. So I will leave you in some uh, pictures and images I have taken from this phone so that way you can judge by yourself. If you see noises in this picture that because we don't have enough light, so the quality of the pictures is gonna drop a lot. So they're basically not the best phone for the camera, of course. I mean, I'm disappointed that because also the front facing camera doesn't have uh, a skin tuning, which is, just before I show you the pictures, also I wanna show you how the front flash works. So all you have to do, just go to the flash, enable the flash and go to the front camera. Just make sure it's on right now. And when you capture the picture, the screen will light up in your face and bring some lights for you, just like that. And then the camera will capture everything. So now I'm gonna leave you with the picture I have taken and the samples I have taken in this device. And that way you guys can judge by yourself. Now let's come to the conclusion and answer the most important question I may be asked. Is the phone worth buy or not? Now based on the price of the phone, I would recommend this phone. If you are on a budget looking for a phone that you don't want to spend a lot of money, you're going to get a phone with a very nice uh, design as you guys can see. It's very futuristic design, has edge to edge infinity display, has the Samsung One UI. You can enjoy all Samsung features as well. You have screen mirroring. Uh, the phone is lightweight and the phone uh, very compact. Yes, this is a good option. But you have to remember, buying this phone, you're not going to get the best camera 
not the best uh, security option the phone lack of the fingerprint as well doesn't have fast charging doesn't have big size of battery and is not splash or waterproof just remember this you can pay a little bit more money and get something higher than this if your budget allow you to do that so it's basically up to you let me know in the comment below what do you think about the samsung galaxy 18e and i will get back with you in a comment for right now thank you so much everyone for watching subscribe to variety stick please if not subscribe why not not subscribe to variety stick and hit the bell for notification so that way every time i post a video you'll be the first to notify about the video i post on youtube and give me thumbs up if you want or if you find this video helpful and i will see you in the next one